so I'm going to talk about two stories today. One is, is how we need to use market-based pricing to affect demand and wireless, use wireless technologies to dramatically reduce our emissions in the transportation sector. And the other is that there's an incredible opportunity if we choose the right wireless technologies, how we can um, generate a new engine for economic growth and dramatically reduce CO2 in the other sectors. I'm really scared. We need to reduce CO2 emissions in 10 to 15 years by 80 percent in order to avert catastrophic effects. And I am astounded that I'm standing here to tell you that what are catastrophic effects? A three degree centigrade climate change rise that will result in 50 percent species extinction. It's not a movie. This is real life. And I'm really worried because when people talk about cars, which I know something about, the press and politicians and people in this room are all thinking, let's use fuel-efficient cars. If we started today, 10 years from now, at the end of this window of opportunity, those fuel-efficient cars will reduce our fossil fuel needs by 4 percent. That is not enough. But now I'll talk about some more pleasant things. Here are some ways that we can make some dramatic changes. So Zipcar is a company that I founded um, seven years ago, but it's an example of something called car sharing. What Zipcar does is we park cars throughout dense urban areas for members to reserve by the hour and by the day instead of using their own car. How does it feel to be a person using a Zipcar? It means that I pay only for what I need. All those hours when a car sitting idle, I'm not paying for it. It means that I can choose a car exactly for that particular trip. So here's a woman that reserved Mini Mia, and she had her day. I can take a BMW when I'm seeing clients. I can um, drive my Toyota Element when I'm going to go on that surfing trip. <laughs> you know, and the other um, remarkable thing is it's, I think, the highest status of car ownership. Not only do I have a fleet of cars available to me in seven cities around the world that I can have at my beck and call, but heaven forbid I would ever maintain or deal with the, ma the repair or have anything to do with it. I, it's like the car you always wanted uh, that your mom said you couldn't have. I get all the good stuff and none of the bad. So what is the social result of this? The social result is that today's Zipcar has 100,000 members driving 3,000 cars parked in 3,000 parking spaces. Instead of driving 12,000 miles a year, which is what the average city dweller does, they drive 500 miles a year. Are they happy? The company's been doubling in size ever since I founded it, or greater. People adore the company, and it's better. You know, they like it. So how is it that people went from the 12,000 miles a year to 500 miles? It's because they said, it's $8 to $10 an hour and $65 a day. If I'm going to go buy some ice cream, do I really want to spend $8 to go buy the ice cream? Or maybe I'll do without. Maybe I would have bought the ice cream when I did some other errand. So people really respond very quickly to it, to prices. And the last point I want to make is Zipcar would never be possible without technology. It required that it was completely trivial. It takes 30 seconds to, rent a, to reserve a car, go get it, drive it. And for me as a service provider, I would never be able to provide you a car for an hour if it, the transaction cost was anything. So without these wireless technologies, this as a concept could never happen. So here's another example. This company is Go Local. I'm launching it in um, about three weeks. And I hope to do for ride sharing what I did for car sharing. This will apply to people across all of America. Today, 75% of the trips are single occupancy vehicles, yet 12% of trips to work are currently carpool. And I think that we can apply social networks and um, online payment systems to completely change how people feel about ride sharing and make that trip much more efficient. And so when I think about the future, people will be thinking that Sharing the ride with someone is this incredibly great social event out of their day. You know, how did you get to TED? You went with other TEDsters. How fabulous. Why would you ever want to go by yourself in your own car? How did you go food shopping? Well, you went with your neighbor. What a great social time. You know, it's going to really transform how we feel about travel, and it will also, I think, enhance our freedom and mobility. You know, where can I go today and who can I do it with? Those are the types of things that you will look at and feel. And the social benefits, 
The rate of single occupancy vehicles, I told you, 75%. I think we can get that, that down to 50%. The demand for parking, of course, is down, congestion and the CO2 emissions. One last piece about this, of course, is that it's enabled by wireless technologies, and it's the cost of driving that is making people want to be able to do this. Um, the average American spends 19% of their income on their car, and they really, there's a pressure for them to reduce that um, cost, yet they have no outlet today. So the last example of this is congestion pricing, um, very famously done in London, and it's when you charge a premium for people to drive on congested roads. In London, the day they turn the congestion pricing on, there was a 25% decrease in congestion overnight. And that's persisted for the four years in which they've been doing congestion pricing. And again, do people like the outcome? Ken Livingston was re-elected. <laughs> uh, so, again, we can see that price pays an enormous role in how people's willingness to um, reduce their driving behavior. We've tripled the miles that we drive since 1970 and doubled them since 1982. There's a huge slack in that system. With the right pricing, we can, we can undo that. Congestion pricing is being discussed in every major city around the world, and it's, again, wirelessly enabled. You weren't going to put toll booths around the city of London and open and shut those gates. And what congestion pricing is, is it's a technology trial and a psychological trial for something called road pricing. And road pricing is where we're all going to have to go, because today we pay for our maintenance and wear and tear on cars with gas taxes. And um, as we get more, our cars more fuel efficient, that's going to be reducing the amount of revenue that you get off of those gas taxes. So we need to charge people by the, by the mile that they drive. Whatever happens with congestion pricing and those technologies will be happening with this road pricing. Why do we travel too much? Car travel is underpriced and therefore we overconsumed. We need to put this better market feedback, and if we have it, you'll decide how many miles to drive, what mode of travel, where to live and work, and wireless technologies make this real time loop possible. So I want to move now to the second part of my story, which is you know, when are we going to start doing this, this pricing of the congestion pricing, the road pricing is coming. When are we going to do it? Are we going to wait 10 to 15 years for this to happen? Or are we going to finally have the political will to make it happen in the next two years? Because as I say, that is going to be a tool that's going to turn, those, turn our usage overnight. And um, what, kind of what kind of wireless technology are we going to use? And uh, this is my big vision. There is a tool that could help us bridge the digital divide, respond to emergencies, get traffic moving, provide a new engine for economic growth, and dramatically reduce CO2 emissions in every sector. And this is a moment from the graduate. Do you remember this moment? You guys are going to be the handsome young guy, and I'm going to be the wise businessman. I want to say one word to you, just one word. Yes, sir. Are you listening? Yes, I am. Ad hoc, peer-to-peer, -peer, self-configuring <laughs> wireless networks. These are also called mesh networks, and in a mesh, every device contributes to and expands the network, and I think you might have heard a little bit about it before. I'm going to give you some examples. You'll be hearing later today from Alan Kay. These laptops, when a child opens them up, they communicate with every single child in the classroom, within that school, within that village, and what is the cost of that communication system? Zero dollars a month. Um, here's another example in New Orleans. Video cameras were mesh-enabled so that they could monitor crime in the downtown French Quarter. Uh, when the hurricane happened, the only communication system standing was the mesh network. Volunteers flew in, added a whole bunch of devices, and for the next 12 months, mesh networks were the only wireless that was happening in, in uh, New Orleans. Um, another example is in Portsmouth, UK. They um, mesh-enabled 300 buses, and they speak to these smart terminals. You can look at the terminal, and um, be able to see precisely where your bus is on the street and when it's coming, and you can buy your tickets in real time. Again, all mesh-enabled, monthly communication cost zero. So the beauty of mesh networks, you can have these very low-cost devices, zero ongoing communication costs, highly scalable. You can just keep adding them, and as in Katrina, you can keep subtracting them. As long as there's some, we can still communicate. They're resilient. The redundancy is built into this fabulous decentralized design. What are the incredible weaknesses? There isn't anybody in Washington lobbying to make it happen, or in those municipalities to build out their cities with these wireless networks, because 
there's zero ongoing communications cost. So the examples I gave you are these islands of mesh networks, and networks are interesting only as they are big. How do we create a big network? Are you guys ready? Again, the graduate. This time, you will still play the handsome young thing, but I'll be the sexy woman. These are the next two lines in the movie. Where did you do it? In his car. So you know when you stick this idea, <laughs> where would we expect me, Robin Chase, to be thinking? Is imagine if we put a mesh network device in every single car across America. We could have a coast-to-coast -coast wireless, free wireless communication system. I guess I just want you to think about that. And why is this going to happen? Because we're going to do congestion pricing. We are going to do road tolls. Gas taxes are going to become road pricing. These things are going to happen. What's the wireless technology we're going to use? Maybe we should use a good one. <laughs> um, when are we going to do it? Maybe we shouldn't wait for the 10 and 15 years for this to happen. We should pull it forward. So I'd like us to launch the wireless internet, interstate wireless mesh system and require that this network be accessible to everyone with open standards. Right now, in the transportation sector, we're creating these wireless devices. I guess you guys might have FastPass here, EasyLane, that are single-purpose devices in these closed networks. What is the point? We're transferring just like a few little data bits when we're doing road trolling and road pricing. We have this incredible excess capacity. So we can provide the lowest cost means of going wireless coast to coast. We can have resilient nationwide communication systems, we have a new tool for creating efficiencies in all sectors. Imagine what happens when the cost of getting information from anywhere to anywhere is close to zero. What you can do with that tool. We can create an economic engine. Information should be free and access to information should be free, and we should be charging people for carbon. I think this is a more powerful tool than the Interstate Highway Act, and I think it's as important and world-changing to our economy as electrification. And if I had my druthers, we would have an open source version in addition to open standards. And this open source version means that it can be, if we did a brilliant job of it, it can be adapted around, it can be used around the world very quickly. So going back to my, um, one of my earlier thoughts, imagine if every one of these buses in Lagos was part of a mesh network. When I went this morning to um, Larry Brilliant's TED Talk Prize, his fabulous networks. Imagine if there was an open source mesh communications device that can be put into those networks to make all that happen. And we can be doing it if we can just get over the fact that someone is, where this little slice of things is going to be for free, and we can make billions of dollars on top of it. But this one particular slice of communications needs to be open source. So let's take control of this nightmare, implement a gas tax immediately, transition across the nation to road tolling with this wireless mesh, require that the mesh be open to all with open standards, and of course, use mesh networks. Thank you.